Okay, we're finally ready to get started on the exercise. So on the left side in the toolbar, come down and hover over the rectangle tool. Make sure you're hovering over the rectangle tool, not this guy, not the rectangle frame tool, not the thing with the X on it, the rectangle tool. Click on that and you'll get a crosshair cursor. Um, now I want you to like make a file similar to what mine looks like, okay? So kind of sort of put stuff in the same areas, okay? Alrighty, um, so I got the, the crosshair folder. I just go click, hold, and drag, and I'll make a, a rectangle about that big. Now over here, this this might, it depends on what happened in your interface here. Typically, if you look at the, uh, the bottom of the toolbar under the magnifying glass, this is your stroke and fill, okay? So like usually, not always, but usually it'll default to a black stroke and no fill. You can see those little curly arrows there. That means I could switch the stroke and fill back and forth. Okay, like if I hit this little curly arrow like that, it'll swap. Now, now I got a black fill and this little frame thingy has a red stroke in it. Now it has no stroke. Okay, so I could switch those back and forth. Um, now, when you draw the rectangle, <clears throat> you'll see like these um, little squares in the corners and on the sides. That's called a bounding box. In the world of Adobe, that's called a bounding box. All right, so whenever you're editing something, moving something, doing anything with anything, if you don't see the bounding box on the object, it's not going to work. Okay, so how do you get the bounding box? Uh, if you lose it, you go to the, you click on the selection tool, which is the black arrow. And then with the black arrow enabled, you can click on the object eventually. Where is it? There, and it works. It, does, it really took me a minute there to get it, um, but it does work. So that's so like if you lose the bounding box, just get your black arrow enabled and then uh, select the object and you get the bounding box. Uh, okay, before I talk about moving and squishing stuff and everything else, uh, I want to go back to the stroke and fill thing here. Okay, so whenever you have a shape selected over here on the right, you get this, what's called, it's called a context sensitive menu, you know, whoop de doo isn't that sound hoity toity? Okay, but anyway, so like this properties menu comes up. So now what we got here, we got a fill, a uh, stroke, okay, I got this fill, it's got no fill, right? And I got a stroke that's black. Um, now if I want to make a black fill, I can double click on this uh, square with a slash through it. All right. And for these beginning uh, intro things, don't use any colors, okay? Because I will take points off uh, because I just want everything in black and white at first. So choose black. And now we have, um, if I click anywhere, I can get rid of that annoying menu there. So now I got a black fill on a black stroke. Um, the stroke around the object will make it less sharp. So I want to take the stroke off of this. How do I do that? Well, next to the stroke, I have this thing that says one point. That's, that's the width of the stroke. If I change this to zero, um, I will get rid of the stroke. So also I can hit the drop down menu right here and choose zero. Now this is what I want. I want a black fill, no stroke. Okay, so uh, that's it. That that's that's what I wanted for this. I just want a rectangle with a black fill, no stroke. Life is good. Yay. Okay. Now, um, now in the world of Adobe, look at the uh, file name. We see a little asterisk in front of the file name. That's Adobe says you made a change to this file. Okay. So every time, you know, when you make a change that you like, right, save the file. So you can either go, you can go file, save, right, or you can do on the Mac command S for save or on the PC do control S. So get used to using the keyboard shortcut. I'm on a Mac, so I'm going to go command S and I just save my file. Another um, 
command keyboard shortcut you're going to use a whole bunch a lot in your career is command Z or control Z that that's undo so for example let's say let's make another rectangle here okay so click on the rectangle tool make a rectangle and then you're like well I hate that I don't want it I made a mistake so on a PC do control Z on the com on the Mac do command Z and it undoes your last um, command and you can go you can command Z or control Z back a whole bunch if I keep if you keep it in control Z or command Z a bunch of times all the stuff that you did will just start disappearing you know so just be aware of that but it's really the command Z control Z thing you're gonna use it a lot so get used to that um, let me think if I want to keep going here uh, yeah, let's keep going. Okay, so I have the um, the black rectangle. Okay, what I want to do is uh, make some more rectangles here. So click on the rectangle tool and just make uh, a narrow vertical rectangle. And I may have defaulted back to um, the, the same stroke and fill. So let's do the same thing. I want the set this stroke and fill so there's no stroke in a black fill so let me double click on fill and set it to black and then the stroke I'm gonna set that to zero points so life is good you know black fill no stroke great super duper um, let's uh, do that again let's make another rectangle a tall narrow rectangle but we're gonna do something a little bit different we're gonna make a white fill and no stroke so double click on fill there's no white it just says paper so click on paper and then again for the stroke set the stroke to zero and that's you know there's nothing there right so it's easy to get to lose this all right um, so we have this long narrow uh, rectangle choose the selection tool the black selection tool hover over this long narrow white rectangle we just made and place it on top of the uh, the large black rectangle what we'll do is we'll copy this narrow rectangle across here to make like a like a picket fence kind of effect here now the way to copy stuff we you have to see the bounding box you can do a command C or control C C for copy command or control C then command or control V Victor and it'll copy and it'll just like kind of randomly place anywhere on the canvas so with your selection tool you can grab and, and just move it um, next to your uh, the first one you made but what's really cool is there's another way to copy stuff in InDesign. With the black arrow enabled, hover over the object you want to copy and hold down the Option key on the Mac or the Alt key on the PC. When I hold down, when I hover over the object and hold down Option, see you get that little double cursor there, or Alt, it's Alt on PC, Option on Mac. Then I can click, hold, and drag and I make a new uh, a copy of that same object. So this is cool. So I don't have to like you know keep resetting the stroke and fill. You know I've, if I want to copy this, you know it's it's easier. Let's do that again. Hover over it. Hold down the Option or Alt key. Click and hold and drag. And now look, see these like green guideline arrows that come up alive there. Those are really, really handy. Uh, this is telling me that um, they're all evenly spaced, you know, so that's really cool. Okay, so I got um, this object working so far. Now you might notice that there's these blue outlines around this object. And what's the deal with this magenta uh, rectangle going all the way around? This is from the screen mode normal thing. Okay, these are the these won't get printed out so if you want to see what what would this look like printed out on a piece of paper or what would this look like if it was published to the web go to view 
screen mode preview and that's this is what it would look like printed out or published to the web it's best to work in screen mode normal so you can keep track of all this stuff so let's go back to view screen mode normal again let's select these four vertical bars we made here and uh, let's let's copy them again hold down option or alt key click hold and drag and then we have this we'll have another group of these things and we can see the bounding box is all around them and, and notice like I can with a black arrow I can do what's called a marquee selection like I can hover out here click hold and drag and I'm selecting just these four right I'm just touching these four uh, bars let go and they're all selected now if I want to I can you know grab these and move these around and stuff and like whoops I moved it to the wrong place hey just I'm just do command Z there now it's back where it belongs so the command Z and control Z you'll use that a lot like when you move something in the wrong area so just command Z and I'm or control Z and I'm back and I'm in business all right with the bounding box are visible on these four objects I can sneak up on a corner and I get these curly arrows when I see the curly arrows I can click hold and drag and I can rotate them okay and I just rotate it randomly okay I really hate that so I'm gonna do command Z or control Z do that again sneak up on the corner get the curly arrows now do this hold down the click and hold then hold down the shift key when I hold down the shift key it uh, constrains it into 45 degree angles okay so moving and holding down shift will keep you know like make sure I go into a 90 degree angle and I'm gonna like move this over so I have like this nice like checkerboard pattern here um, and I can stretch these as as long as as far as I want just grab the bounding box and stretch them or I can grab the bounding box on the edge and I can smush them together okay so make something like that um, click to uh, uh, deselect everything and then let's check this out in screen mode uh, preview view screen mode preview okay so get something that looks like that then go back to view screen mode normal save your file you can go file save or command or control s and then i'll see you in the next video